mental health services are becoming commonplace in local schools. One partner helping to make that happen is the organization People Incorporated. We visited its New Hope location to learn more about what happens in school-based therapy settings. People Incorporated in New Hope acts as a home base for mental health programs for kids, mainly day treatment and school-based treatment. Day treatment is highly sought after, usually waiting lists uh, to fill up, fill up uh, our spots. Um, School-based therapists, all of them are full and all of those schools want more. Bruce Cross oversees the school-based therapist here. He says integrating more mental health into the school day is the wave of the future. It really is uh, the way you access mental health services now. Um, there wasn't lunch in the school way back when and now there is. There wasn't nursing in the school way back when and now there is. Uh, there is going to be mental health services in all the schools. But what do those services look like? Nathaniel Bruski gives us a look. He is the therapist who works at Sandberg Middle School. I have a lot of kids who don't quite know how to even express their emotions. You know, so simple like, how are you feeling today? You know, in, instead of mad or sad, let's kind of open up your vocabulary a little bit. Some of the posters in this day program classroom are similar to what you'd see at school. Several illustrations encouraging students to give words to what they are feeling. And even though the, the kid did all the work, I was just there to help facilitate. Like it's really cool and rewarding to see how they've grown. But sometimes getting students to talk or connect is the hard part. So therapists like Kylie Audi find age appropriate activities like playing or painting. Whatever is going to keep the interest of the person and assist them to talk with me about how they're feeling is what we do. Therapists we spoke with say one of their goals is to make sure students feel heard. Really my job is to kind of run alongside them until they're ready to run on their own. And another encouraging part of People Incorporated's work with students is seeing students start to advocate for their own mental health. This past year I had a couple of kids even just just be like, hey, you're the guy, <laughs> and, and pop in, which was really encouraging to see young people doing that for themselves. Brooklyn Park is deploying a first-of-its-kind system in the city to keep both pedestrians and students going back and forth to school safe. You'll now see these flashing lights at the crosswalk on 109th Avenue between Champlin Park High School and Jackson Middle School. They're called rectangular rapid flashing beacons. City officials say they will help protect approximately 200 children who use the crosswalk before and after school. At this crossing, we thank goodness we have not had any significant crashes or, or people getting hit by vehicles, but there's always close calls. And when we're able to add some safety measures such as this and, and work together with, again, Champlin, Brooklyn Park and the school district, it was just an additional safety measure we felt was necessary. There's also an anti-COVID feature. Pedestrians can activate the lights by waving their hand close to the button. This week, the Brooklyn Park City Council approved entering into a sister city relationship with Bonjul, which is the capital city of the Gambia. The mayor of Bonjul came to visit Brooklyn Park in June. Gambians are part of Brooklyn Park's diverse West African community. The sister city relationship could include staff sharing information as well as a possible visit to that country. Brooklyn Park also has an active sister city relationship with Kakata, Liberia. When Robbinsdale Spanish Immersion opened its doors in 1987, it was one of only two Spanish Immersion schools in the state. The school is now housed on Medicine Lake Road in New Hope. The program is open to all students district-wide through an application and lottery system. Students are immersed in Spanish for the majority of their day with a goal of acquiring Spanish as a second language. It's very exciting to see how these children are using their ability to speak Spanish and learn about another language and culture to help others and also use it in their job and daily life. Organizers say what they hear from alumni as one of the best memories of attending RSI is the Fiesta Fun Fair that was held every year. The story of one of our favorite spooky and maybe a little kooky families will grace the stage starting this weekend. In today's Weekend Showcase, reporter Jason Malello gives us a preview of Soar Regional Arts production of The Addams Family. It's a story about love. Which can maybe seem kind of surprising when you think of the Adams Family as you think of like the monsters and the quirky, kooky people. But the message is really about like loving each other and being present. SOAR Regional Arts is bringing its version of the Adams Family to the stage at St. Michael Albertville Middle School West. The musical comedy includes all the kooky and quirky players. Fester is, is really there to 
you know, bring the ancestors in and, and really drive the, the love story forward. Make sure that the, you know, Wednesday and, and Lucas, you know, find each other and that ultimately love triumphs. Maple Grove actor Ryan Nielsen is a longtime fan of the Adams family and plays the role of patriarch Gomez Adams. I love that family. I identified with them. And so the opportunity to play one of my favorite characters ever is really awesome. The production is made up of 25 actors and 20 crew, and they rehearse about 25 hours a week. It is definitely a commitment, uh, but it's, it's well worth it. The, uh, uh, the fruits of the labor are the big payoff. And SOAR prides itself on the collaboration of its actors especially the mentoring of young people who take the stage. Not necessarily say, hey, you know, here's how, you know, you should do this, that, or the other thing, but just to, to nurture them and, you know, um, you know, foster that creative spirit. Um, that's what I love about theater is it's, it's, you know, truly a home that's accepting and a place where everybody belongs. And maybe that's the lesson that Fester and Gomez and the rest of the gang can teach us. Live and let live, and don't judge. It's great to, to share that kind of a message with a whole room full of people, especially right now. There's a lot of division, and COVID, and it's just really exciting to be live again. Let's live For the CCX Weekend Showcase, let's laugh before we cry. I'm Jason Malillo. One of Minnesota's most recruited football players ever stars right here in the Northwest suburbs. Our first CCX Spotlight story for the school year features Cooper High School's Jackson Howard. Here's Jay Wilcox. It's gut check time for Cooper football standout Jackson Howard and his teammates. Kind of a little kick in the mouth for us. After a great 2021 season that saw the Hawks reach the state semifinals, they lost their first two games this season. You know, sometimes as a team we kind of need that. We're a little young. Um, and I think just discipline-wise, we kind of need a little bit more kick in our step. And I think, uh, especially just this week in practice, we have to up the ante in everything that we do in all aspects. Senior defensive end and tight end Howard is one of Minnesota's most highly sought recruits ever. The downside, opponents aren't looking to challenge him often. So the game plan usually means avoiding him, which can be frustrating. But at the same time, I feel like it's somewhat of a, like a respect standpoint. The, you know, they think I'm a good enough player that they have run away from me from, but uh, yeah, no, for me, I feel like I've gotten to a point where I, I don't need to be selfish at all. I don't need to, dude, come on, I need my tackles. What I really want is to be in the best position I can be to help my team get my win. Um, and with that, I'd be completely satisfied. Jackson knows all eyes are on him on game nights and that some are waiting to see if he lives up to the hype. You gotta work through it. You gotta continue to work through it. You gotta keep grinding. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm not worried about any of that stuff because at the, I think I reached a point where kind of like the overrated stuff didn't really go, it doesn't go to my head anymore. You know, it's kind of like, I know what I am and I know what I'm capable of. Um, and I'm not going to let anybody in those stands kind of dictate what I think about myself. And I think that was just another thing. Like I got to continue to grow. Jackson's dad, Willie, is the Hawks head coach. And after being an assistant principal in recent years, is now Cooper's activities director too. I think having my dad in the building has made me a better person. Um, kind of just, I don't know, being able to be disciplined in a, in a good way, not really in a, you know, in a bad way. I don't get yelled at like that, but I will. he will get on me if he sees something like a slip up in my grades. My door's open for him to come to, but I also don't call him down. I don't tell him that my space is for him to come hang out at. Um, you know, he understands that we're at school. This is a job. This is not bring son to, to school day. This is this is my job. This is your school. Uh, go take care of business in the classroom. Uh, do what you need to do. While football's his main thing, Howard played baseball and competed in track and field last spring, surprising even himself by placing second in the shot put and discus at the state meet. At first, I wasn't even thinking that was even possible. Um, I, I think I came into the season throwing like a 141 uh, for discus. And I was thinking that was my cap, you know, that was, that was it. And as the weeks were going by at first, cause I was still playing baseball um, and I was more heavy into baseball just cause I, that's the sport I've been playing for all my life. We might not have the best baseball team, but I just love being around my guys and being able to work with them and keep playing. But um, it took me until like, the, like later on in the season when I realized, hey, maybe this track thing, I could go a little somewhere with it. Cause I was always like, somewhat naturally good, but I didn't really practice. 
in July after narrowing his choices to five finalists. Go Tigers. Howard announced that he'll play football for Louisiana State, a rare Minnesotan to head to the mighty SEC. I'm gonna be able to get down to the SEC and kind of represent my state in Minnesota. Um, there's guys down there in South in the South like that, that play football year round. You know, we have the luxury of only being able to play like, what is it, five months, something like that. So, um, no, I, just, I think like the biggest thing is just being able to get down there and kind of, yes, I have the skills that I have right now, but when I'm able to implement all that knowledge that I'm gonna get down there, I think that's gonna make me a much better player. Like many high school seniors who are getting ready to step out into the world for college, Jackson Howard is excited, but also knows a big adjustment comes with moving away. Getting down to Louisiana, I think, is a, is a way for me to kind of grow a little bit, getting out of my comfort zone, being a bird, getting out of that nest. Howard plans to enroll early at LSU starting there in January. Watch for the complete game coverage of the Cooper Armstrong football game this weekend on CCX Sports, plus highlights of the game on Monday. That's all for sports. I'm John Jacobson.